Vengeance. Vengeance. Welcome to another video guys, today we'll talk about how to get legendaries and dust in Hearthstone in 2020. I've did a few videos like this in the past with great success, but it's time to give you guys an updated one, since we did see some major changes around this topic for the better. Hearthstone did become a whole lot more friendlier to free to play players, so in this video I will explain to you how you can benefit the most out of those changes. Drop a like if you find the video helpful and subscribe if you're new. But now let's get into it. The main topics we will discuss are the new duplicate protection rule and how you should manage your collection from now on, disenchanting wild cards and if it's a good idea to do it, and ways to get more gold with which you can buy more packs, hence more cards and dust. Starting off with the new no duplicates protection rule that has to be one of the best things that happened to Hearthstone ever. As most of you know, as of March of 26th, we have the protection of opening a third copy of a common, rare and epic card before we've opened all of the cards from that rarity. A lot of people thought that you will not open a third common before you have opened all of the set legendaries, but no, the no duplicate rule applies only for cards of that rarity. As soon as you opened two of each common card from a set, you will obviously start opening duplicate commons. It would have been amazing if we started opening packs with only rares, epics and legendaries from that set, but no, that's not too realistic is it. Another more realistic misconception was the idea that we will be able to open nerfed cards over and over again just because we have opened all of the cards from that rarity. I was skeptical it would be like that, but I too delved into this idea and I did explain it in a video not too long ago. Sadly, no, we will not be able to open nerfed cards like that over and over again, because once you open and disenchant a card, the no duplicate rules still apply. This means that the no duplicate rule is not for owning two of each common, rare and epic, but for opening them. Meaning that the game will remember that you opened that card and you will not open it until you open all of the other cards from that rarity. Keep in mind that the game just started tracking this after March 26th, so you will start opening a lot of cards that you dusted in the past. Even though it is a bit sad that we won't open nerfed cards over and over again, this opens up a lot of possibilities for players with low resources. You can forget about the rule about not disenchanting any of your legendaries or any other card for that matter. From now on, as long as you're sure you won't want to play with a card, you're free to disenchant it. Gone are the days where we kept Milhouse and Lorewalker Cho just so we don't open them again, and you can can also do that with bad epics, rares and even commons if you're that desperate. The no duplicate rule will protect you from opening those baddies again and you will open every other card from that rarity before you open them again. This will be really powerful for free to play players. If you're on a really tight budget, you can go as far as to disenchant one or two complete classes as long as you're 100% sure you will never want to play those. I wonder which class popped in most people's minds right now. Before you start disenchanting like mad, I have to warn you about something else. Which leads us to the next topic, disenchanting wild cards. Generally, if you were a strictly standard player, disenchanting your wild collection was a no-brainer, and a lot of people funded their standard dreams with their dusted wild collections. The only downside of doing that was the fact that you will have a really hard time getting back into wild if someday you decided to go there, but a lot of people didn't have issues with that. The new things that you have to consider are coming from this post. We already knew about the achievements and that a new game mode is about to get released later this year, but it wasn't specified that we could use our wild collections in there. From the picture we got on the Year of the Phoenix announcement, we can see that the new mode will get unlocked after the new expansion gets released in August, and we can see that the achievements will be after the December expansion. What those would be, and if it would be worth it for us to hold on to so much potential dust, nobody knows, but if you can hold off dusting your wild cards for now, it might be worth it for you. My strategy with disenchanting cards is to never click the mass disenchant button, and only to dust cards when I actually need the dust. I don't dust my wild collection either, even though I don't play wild. But I know that this is a luxury not too many people can afford. The reason why I don't press the mass disenchant button is the possible nerfs. We already did see one nerf wave hit, and another one is gonna hit next week. I'm pretty sure we will see another wave of nerfs after 2 or 3 weeks, even though Blizzard says otherwise. There are not that many eligible cards for nurse from this wave, but still, I have a ton of albatrosses just sitting there waiting to lay me a golden egg. When I choose which extra cards I want to this, I try to figure out if there's any scenario where that card might get nerfed in the future. If you get this right and you can't afford to keep extra copies in your collection, this way you can gain a lot of extra dust. The sad thing with the no duplicates protection rule is we won't be able to open nerfed legendaries over and over again. But in the end of the day, I think it's a change that benefits all and not just the ones with huge collections. Now let's move down to maximizing gold gains. First up is the change that happened most recently to gold rerolls. 
Hearthstone implemented the rule that if you change a quest that has 60 or more gold, you will always get an easy 50 gold quest. This means that if maximum gold gain is your goal, you should never reroll a quest that gives 60 or more gold, cause you always will get 50 gold quests. Keep in mind that if you reroll a pack giving quest, you might end up with a quest that it's not only 50 gold, but any other one. It's still a pretty good idea to finish the pack giving quests, since it's at least 40 dust, so there's that. Another quest related tip here is with the challenge of friend quest. If you want maximum gold gain, always trade your challenge of friend quest with another person that also has the quest. This way, both of you get 160 instead of 80, and that's not bad at all. When I want to trade my quest, I always use reddit, because I've never been scammed there. Just to make sure you never get scammed, always finish your opponent's quest first, and only then give him yours. Needless to say, don't be a duck about it, and don't scam other people out of their quests. Another tip I like to give here is to add the maximum number of friends on your Battle.net account for the chance that those people would give you their 80 gold quests for free. A lot of people don't care to trade those and just give it to the first person they see online. In the past, I've had up to 400 gold per day from that, but nowadays it's a lot rarer. But hey, it's still free gold. Another way you can get extra gold, dust and packs is from the arena. Right now arena is pretty cool because it runs only the standard cards in it, and the new players with smaller collections can get a good feel of a wide variety of standard cards. It's a good way of getting familiar with cards you don't usually own, and it's a nice way of farming resources too, especially if you get good at it. It would be really good for you to buy arena tickets instead of packs, especially if you manage to make free wins or more each run. After that the rewards get a lot better than the invested 150 gold, so you will be making a pretty good profit. If you manage to do 7 or more wins, that means you went infinite, because you will get 150 gold in the rewards, as well as a pack and some other resources. Getting 12 wins is also pretty amazing, and you will get a pack as a reward, as well as more than 500 gold sometimes, although there will be the occasional disappointing rewards like golden commons and rares. Also, you always want to leave an unfinished arena once our arena set rotation hits, so you get your rewards and you also get a free arena ticket. It's a neat little trick that you can do up to 6 times per year for a total of 900 gold in arena tickets. Try to keep track when Blizzard announces a new arena changes coming in, or just join my Facebook and Discord, where I try to give you guys reminders when something like that happens. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video guys, hope this helps you make better decisions for your collection. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.